Hi, I'm Gay Craker. Welcome back. This week I'm going to show you some simple drawing. Well, they're really seeing techniques, but they'll help you get some lines on our pages or papers. And then I'm going to show you some of our super fun watercolor shortcuts, our watercolor journaling machines. And those machines are dry wall tape, table salt, a toothbrush, tissue, paper towel, and a sponge or two. The rest of the tools I'll be using are the same as the ones I used last week. If I want to try different techniques before I put them in my journal, I'll use the Strathmore Skills Series 200 watercolor paper. The pages tear out easily and you can work on both sides of the page and if you'd like when you're finished you can bind them together. Whether you use the 400 series journals or the practice tablets I encourage you to use your art supplies. As with any skill when you practice drawing and painting you get better at it. The paint Paper or books are nothing without what you do with them. I can't teach you to be an artist like Michelangelo, or even to draw or paint like me. What I can do is show you some techniques that will help you draw and paint like you, and record the unique way you see your world. And if you keep your pages or your books, you will end up with a precious record of your life. The first exercise I'm going to show you is not really a drawing exercise. It is a seeing exercise because you are only looking at the object you're drawing and not at your paper. I choose where I am going to start my drawing, check the position on my page, and then I won't look at my paper again until I stop. I am keeping my eyes only on the creature I am drawing. Since this is an exercise in seeing, not drawing, what is going on with my hand isn't important. What is important is that my eye is moving over the creature and noticing all its folds and wrinkles, textures, hairs, and sticky out bits. I'll try to remember a few guidelines as I move my pen. I will keep my eye and my pen moving at the same speed. My eye is going to want to race ahead and see what challenges are coming next, but I'm going to try and slow it down so that my hand can keep up. I'm also doing a continuous line blind contour. That means I am not lifting my pen off the paper. So if I see something inside the creature, like fur, I will let my pen follow the fur lines and then I will have to restate my line to get back to the edge of the creature. And the most important thing to remember when doing this exercise is to breathe. <sighs> this is supposed to be fun. There should be no pressure to create the perfect drawing. This is only a relaxing ramble for your eye. Remember, this is an exercise in seeing, not drawing. Okay, maybe it doesn't look quite so much like a goat, but I really learned about this creature. I learned that his hoof separates. I learned that he has some interesting fur detail. And I learned he has more than one color. If you're not sure you can recognize your creature later, I put uh, a note that this was a blind contour drawing, and I can label what exactly the creature was if I'm not quite sure. I'll draw the goat again using modified blind contour this time. I start the same way and in the same place. As my pen is moving, my eye is on the creature. But with modified blind contour, if I find myself not quite sure where I'm going with my pen, I lift the pen, look at my paper, and make adjustments with pen placement if I need to. But my pen does not start moving again until my eyes are back on the goat. 
I check the horns against the ears and draw the inside of that ear. Now when I draw the eye, I lift my pen, look at my paper, and put my pen where the eye should go. My eye goes back to the goat to trace the eye shape. There are different colors on the goat face that I will trace while my eye is still on the goat. I can stop my pen and check my paper when I come to an area on the goat where parts cross or I get to the end of the page there. One of the places parts cross is on his legs. So I stop, check, and move my pen where it needs to be. It's a good spot right there. My goat will not be perfect and I am still really seeing what is going on with him or her, but this drawing is looking a little bit more like a goat. I will label it too. I messed up a little on the word little my T crossed my L, and it looks a little like three T's. So I thickened it up some to see if I could fix it and make it look like I planned it. Not quite fixed, but my motto is constantly striving for imperfection. I'm really good at imperfection. Now I'm going to show you the second drawing or seeing exercise. People often tell us they don't have time to draw, so this exercise helps with that lack of time problem. You can draw this basket however you want. It is not a blind drawing. You can look at your paper. The catch is you only have 15 seconds to draw it. You may not be able to capture the whole thing in 15 seconds. So what is it about this basket that is important to you? What do you want to draw? Maybe just the outline of it? Maybe the texture in the middle? Or maybe the handles? Whatever you draw, everyone will see it differently and do it their way. Okay, we will all start at the same time. Go. Remember to breathe. Fifteen seconds goes by fast. Ah, work quick. But breathing is still important. And stop. I learned you don't have to draw everything. Our brains are very powerful. If you give a suggestion of detail, the brain will fill in the rest without all that effort, not to mention the time it takes to draw all that stuff. This is good to remember when you find yourself drawing things like baskets, or bricks, or similar repetitive things. Okay, I'm taking the basket away and replacing it with the boot. I'm going to give you a little more time now, 30 seconds, to capture that mud there. Or maybe the straps across, there's a good buckle in there. Maybe you just want to get the outline. Whatever you choose, get ready to start. And go. Remember to breathe while you're drawing. It's harder to hold your breath for 30 seconds. I'm trying to fill up my page and uh, get the basic shape in quickly, of course. And I'm going to uh, add a little mud, get those uh, straps in there, a little more mud on the bottom, and now stop. 30 seconds is longer than 15 seconds but it's still a pretty short amount of time to capture any details. But I have seen what was important to me in this boot, and I can come back later and add more details if I like. For our last quick sketch, let's do something a bit more complicated. Can you tell I have grandchildren? There's a lot going on in this. Uh, lots of different colors, and uh, there's the cute little guy up there. Isn't he cute? and a cup holder, oh, maybe it's the exhaust. Well, whatever, we're going to have a minute to draw this, and it's going to seem like a long time. Are you ready? Go. Quick sketch is about scene. 
you learn to see what is important to you and make quick decisions about what to include in a drawing. This can be handy when you're speeding by things you want to capture in your journal or if your companions are in a hurry. My husband often says, I should use my camera, it would be faster, but it's nowhere near as much fun. And I'm out of luck if I lose the photo. When I've drawn something, even if I've only spent a few seconds on it, it is more deeply etched in my memory banks. I've had a student tell me it was because we use more than one sense, hand and eye, and more neurons are involved and it does actually etch a deeper neurological groove in our brains. I don't know if that's true, but it works for me. All right, our minute is already up and stop. That was our last quick sketch for today. So let's move on to our watercolor machines. I'll start with the cloud machine. This handy gadget is useful for many things, but it makes great clouds. Make sure you find an unlotioned cloud machine. Lotion is good for the nose, but not so good with watercolors. Oil and watercolor don't mix so well. Get your cloud machine ready by shaping it into a cloudish shape. Next, lay down an even wash. Blue or gray is good, but skies can be many colors, so don't limit yourself. While your wash is still wet, take the cloud machine and gently blot where your clouds should go. InstaCloud. You can make tall, puffy clouds, or you can thin your cloud machine out and make those long, stringy clouds. We can take our brush and touch up the bottom of the cloud here and there where the shadows would be, usually underneath. I blot my darks with the uh, cloud machine just like I blotted the original wash. Keep touching on the up on the underneath side of the clouds and one final blot, one or two final blots, and we have clouds in our blue sky. You can also use the thicker cloud machine. When choosing these thicker machines, you want to keep in mind the pattern they come with. Clouds work best with a smoother surface. I use this cloud machine the same way as the lightweight cloud machine, but I can also try it wet. I'll dip it in my water and squeeze out the excess and try it and see how that works. It's about the same, but you get a little different effect. I'll darken the bottom edges of the clouds, just like I did with the thin cloud machine, and blot. And I'll pull down some of my uh, bottom edge there to suggest rain. I always like to do some fun things like that. For clouds, the less pattern, the better. But if you were making something with scales, like snakes or fish, look for a scaly pattern and your cloud machine becomes a scale machine. I love versatile tools. I'll start with a new clean versatile machine and after I make an ocean colored wash, I'll twist my wave machine and gently press it into the wet wash. As I get closer to the bottom, I let it unroll as waves or anything closer to you is larger. While it's still good and wet, I'll come back with my brush and touch a little blue under some of the waves to add some shadow underneath them. This next great texture machine is readily available at local restaurants and probably in your kitchen. This is a very versatile texture machine. You can use it to make sand textures on a beach for your waves to crash on. I've mixed a couple of sand colors, and now all I do is sprinkle the texture machine on my very wet wash. The nice thing about this machine is it comes in two sizes, small and large. Your wash has to be really wet to get the right effect with the large salt. I'm moving my page a little to get that bead, that extra wet, juicy part of the wash. When the page is completely dry, brush off the salt. You can really see the difference with the rock salt. 
My next machine can be picked up at the grocery store. It can be trimmed to any size you'd like. I see this one has some ridges that is going to create an interesting texture. So I can choose, if I don't like that texture, I can choose a different machine here. And I'll dip that in a nice juicy puddle and press gently and stamp some dirt-like texture on my page. I'll add a light wash over the top of my texture when it is dry and then come back and add some shadow underneath some individual rock-like shapes. I've done that after my wash is dry. I'll use my fine spatter machine to add some, some tiny dots and then I'll come back with more pigment on my brush to touch up those shadows and make some of them a little darker. With a little trimming and a different color and a new page, my dirt machine can become a tree machine. I'll take a smaller section and stamp some um, tree shapes on my page. I'm going to add a little bit more pigment directly from my pigment to come underneath where it would be darker in my leaf clump areas. Now I'm mixing up a nice trunk color and I'll add my trunk in there. See the trunk through the uh, leaf clumps. This is a, an imaginary tree. I'm darkening up uh, underneath while my trunk is still wet. And then after everything is dry, I add a green wash over the top. While that wash is still wet, I'll come back with a little darker green on the underneath parts of my leaf clumps. And because it's still nice and wet, everything will blend together well. And there's our tree. Our next machine is found at a home improvement store. It can make lines and textures. It comes with a little sticky on the back, so I just adhere it to my page gently. And then I can trace directly through one of the uh, little grid areas. And I can use a pencil so I can erase those lines later if I like, or I can leave them. And if I like a darker line, I can use a pen and I can go horizontally or vertically and make whatever pattern I would like. And I can add text to that later if I want. And you can also use this very versatile machine to make a nice texture on your page before you do anything. I've used a couple of colors here. And you can either let it dry, or if you're impatient like me, gently peel it off. You can also, while there's still some pigment on your machine, press again and add some more texture. I hope you enjoyed the watercolor journaling machines. I made a couple of pages incorporating all my machines to show you how I use them in my journals. I'm looking forward to see what you create with the machines. Next week, I will go outside and show you some techniques to make drawing in the great outdoors easier. See you then.